taking three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh, no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thakor here, of course. And today I've got an older replay that I want to show. I've had it for a little while. Um, but I think today is a good day to show it off. So, what we've got is this is a replay that actually was submitted by uh, Melth1313. If you recall, I had a few videos. Uh, rather a few replays submitted from them as well that we've put up on the channel and today I've got another one So this is before Melth actually got his um, Colorado so at this point still in the New Mexico um, It's one of the last battles I believe in the New Mexico that he had and I uh, really really turned out to be an excellent battle So you can see we are on Domin or, uh, New Dawn today rather and um, the teams yeah fairly even we'll say, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> uh, but Melth really does uh, do very well in this battle. I think we get uh, Confederate High Caliber and Dreadnought at the end, maybe. Can't quite remember. We're gonna see it when it happens anyway. <laughs> On a side note, um, have any of you tried those ranked battles as of yet? I think they're they're a lot of fun. I had some uh, some fun in them last night. I managed to get up to rank 21, I believe, and I definitely noticed the progression in skill, even from the rank 25 going to 21. I know 21 isn't you know that great of a rank anyway, but I definitely saw the progression and the uh, the difference in uh, like playing in the rank 25 battle versus the rank 21 battle. You can see that by rank 21 at least, people are starting to put two and two together and realize that they need to work with the team in order to succeed. So that's just a side note, <laughs> just something um, I wanted to bring up and mention and see what you guys thought, or have found as well. Really liking those rank battles. Anyway, getting back to our video today, here we are. So there's Melth, he's loaded into the battle and we can see uh, it's a, a standard battle on New Dawn. We've got the two cap points, um, you would think given where uh, the team has spawned that the, the the best place to go, I guess I'll say, or, or the most logical place to go would be to stick towards the uh, mid to northern half of the map and work your way down from there with the team. That would be what you would want to do in this situation if that's what the team <laughs> is doing in this situation. I mean, keep in mind, ultimately, you know, best laid plans, right? Um, I did a video on it, you might want to go that way, but in the end you're going to go the way that the team is going because that's the way that you know, you're know you going to have support. This is a replay, right, that I recorded in the replay system, the, well the non-existent, I'm using bunny ears there, <laughs> the non-existent replay system that World of Warships has. Um, so if things at times look a little wonky, that's what it is. Uh, so taking a look at the overall map here. You can see the team is kind of spreading out. Um, the northern part, the northern part of the map, doesn't seem to be the focus of the team at this time. It does look like they'll be heading into the middle and the southern part of the map, uh, which is fine to do. Uh, there's no problems with that. It's just if you're going to do this strategy, uh, you need to make sure that the team is with you, right? If uh, the team or the majority of the team thought, "No, we're in the north. I'm going to go to the north and then push south," and you were like, "No, nah, I always like going south down to where that sea point usually is," and it's just you and a couple ships going down there, that is then wrong. <laughs> you should, don't bother doing that. Go with the team. Uh, be flexible. You know, don't just I've talked about it before. Don't just stick to your one plan, and uh, you know, pray to are in Jesus, I guess, uh, that everything is going to go fine, because it's not. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> so anyway, cruising along, uh, the New Mexico does look very nice. I talked about before, very nice looking ship. But God, it is slow, isn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, I've talked about it before, and I know, I know, there are probably people who are really in love with these American battleships and whatnot. I can't stand them. Uh, look how slow this thing is. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, the enemy aircraft carriers do seem to be 
putting up a, a pretty good stance, I guess. Uh, you can see they do have some ships or some planes there in the sky doing some scouting and taking out uh, some bombers to potentially hit some softer targets like the destroyers. Now, Melth did shoot in a salvo there. Um, I don't think it hit anything. No, I didn't see any numbers pop up, but still, nice salvo. Yo, I mean, if you have the shot, take the shot, right? Uh, if it's the if it's the target you want to shoot at, good, take the shot. Um, if it's advantageous, take the shot, right? It just just makes sense, at least to me, anyway, and hopefully to you guys as well. <laughs> I mean, we're all playing the same game, so our the strategy should be similar <laughs> amongst the people. There was a nice hit there, not too bad at all. Looks like we got a bit of lag here. Yeah. Oh well no big deal. We will muster through. Now on a side note, this has nothing to do with uh, World of Warships, but I just recently started watching Fear the, Wa or Fear the Walking Dead. Man, it's the official spin-off of uh, The Walking Dead. I don't know how many people like The Walking Dead, I assume a lot of you because it is amazing. Uh, more importantly, Fear the Walking Dead is also really good. Set in Los Angeles, and it's looking at the uh, the breakdown of civilization. They're only on the the, the fourth episode will come out this Sunday. Uh, today being the 18th of September, so on Sunday the fourth episode will come out. If you haven't checked it out, you should probably check it out. It looks pretty cool. Uh, satisfied with it anyway. All right, getting back to ships. <laughs> That's enough <laughs> off-topic stuff. Um, we did, Melth did get a nice citadel hit on that enemy ship there. That was awesome. Taking a look at the overall picture here again, you can see the allied team is pushing the south, and the enemy team seems to be coming into the south as well. So we're going to have a bit of a, a battle down here in the south, um, which is nice to see, uh, because, and that was another hit there, about 5,400 uh, damage that Melth did. Um, but this is nice to see because, you know, if the majority of the ships are clumped down here in the middle, then, then everyone's going to be able to support each other and you're going to have a nice big brawl. And usually it's the winner of the brawl who is going to win the map uh, all together. And that's really what the New Mexico is, is really good at. It's, I know it's slow and I just talked about how much I hate how slow it is, but once you get there, once you get to the actual battle line, you can sort of wedge yourself in there in this type of ship. It has lots of armor, good guns on it, um, and at these close, uh, mid to close range, it's going to do a lot of damage, a whole crap ton of damage. Uh, so it's really advantageous for you to, get, to wedge yourself in there when you're in one of these American battleships at the New Mexico, for example, and just start duking it out. This is what these ships do. Historically, the American uh, battleship theory or battleship doctrine was uh, that the battleships themselves would stand off from the cruisers and the destroyers and they would provide long range fire uh, into the battle line. And so you'd have your cruisers and destroyers up front and then the American battleships would be in the back firing in. Uh, that, that was the theory behind it. Now, because they have smaller caliber guns, they didn't get the desired range that they wanted out of these ships. Which kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, and I, and I can see World of Warships does it as well, and they, they limit your, your range on these lower tier American battleships. Yeah, but it, it's not totally historical. I, I'm pretty sure that these ships could stand off at a farther distance and fire in, but whatever. That was the American theory at the time and what these ships were built for, right? And, and this sort of theory started with the, the original ships, um, like the Wyoming, the South Carolina, uh, even the New York to some extent. Uh, you can really see the transition in theory and doctrine in the American battleship uh, line as you're working your way up and once you get <clears throat> excuse me, to the North Carolina. You can really see the, the change there, and the more mm, similar the American battleship doctrine becomes to a Japanese battleship doctrine, in that you are all about long-range fire. That's what it is. I mean, the, bow, the, the Japanese battleships, they did have decent armor. They had good armor, like a Nagato, you know? It's a great standard ship of the line. Uh, but in terms of armor... I guess we'll say, 
you could look, the Japanese made use more of battle cruisers, like your Imagi, even though the Imagi never actually sailed uh, as a battle cruiser, she was converted to an aircraft carrier. Um, but the Congo, uh, I mean, as well, like you can see, they preferred to use these faster battleships to keep up with their, with their um, aircraft carrier forces. Yeah, makes sense. And the Americans do this, uh, do the same thing once they get these uh, more modern battleships out on the battlefield. Because keep in mind, like uh, you know, you're in New York, you're New Mexico, you're Colorado. These were all built well before World War II started, and these were all built based on World War One experience from naval battles. It's not until you get to the North Carolina that you start seeing more modern approaches to naval warfare. Anyway. That's my blurb on that. <laughs> kind of went off on a tangent. Now, while I was doing that, if you were watching, you can see Melf landed some really nice shots on some targets here. And for the most part, he's sticking around this um, southern point of the map. And the team, his team, has cleared out the north and now are pushing down. You can see the two ships here off on the starboard side. And they're sort of pushing down now. And it's almost like the Allied team is enveloping the enemy team right now. It is going really, really well. Mm. Need coffee. Now, that was a nice shot as well. I think it was about 7200 experience. Not 100% sure on the actual number there, but nice shot going in. Not too shabby at all. Uh, in terms of where the team, you know, where the teams are sitting in, in ships remaining, um, Melf's team does have the advantage by one ship, where the enemy team is down by one ship. What I think is more important, looking at those numbers, or the ships remaining, is the type of ships remaining. Uh, you can see that the, the Allied team still has uh, some pretty good, well, two cruisers and a destroyer left, right? And then battleships and aircraft carriers. Now that's important, because on the enemy team, they don't have any cruisers left. They just have a destroyer, battleships, and aircraft carriers. So it's these cruisers that are making big difference here in this battle. Not to mention, obviously, Melt. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? These are some massive shots going out here. All right. So the guys who are coming down from the north are still coming in, and they're still putting pressure on those enemies over there, which is really nice because they are now focused on those ships as opposed to focusing on mouth. There's another nether citadel and there's the first kill. So because those people from the north were occupying the enemies who were defending that northern position, mouth was able to fire into them without actually taking any incoming damage. Uh, no one is firing at mouth right now, which is really surprising. Um, it's interesting, I actually read some uh, information on the forums about HE shells and how this one individual thought that HE shells were overpowered and were changing gameplay and changing the way people are playing the game and not necessarily for the better. The premise behind it was uh, that the HE shells are so overpowered that battleships are no longer focusing on other battleships. They're now focusing on cruisers because cruisers are the bigger threat. They can just pump out HE shells, set the battleship on fire, work away the health and get the kill. I can see that. I would agree with that. Whether or not HE shells are overpowered, I'd, it's hard to say. Um, for me, anyway. I can see it both ways. I love the HE shells the way they are now when I'm in a destroyer or a cruiser and I need that extra firepower or I'm in a sticky situation and I want to just pump out a bunch of fire and make whatever enemy is after me question whether or not he wants to continue coming after me. I can see it from that. But at the same effect, I can see what the individual is talking about, about overpowered HE shells. Because if you're in a battleship, logically you would think that you're going to be fighting the other battleships. Cruisers will be fighting cruisers, destroyers will be fighting destroyers, initially. And then once, you know, that sort of breaks down and battle lines are established, then you're going to start firing at um, different ships, different classes of ships, depending on, you know, where they are relative to you and all that lovely stuff. I can see it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the post, but I found it interesting. 
very interesting to note. Uh, especially because, you know, World of Warships is talking about paper, scissor, rock type stuff, right? Like battleship beats cruiser, cruiser beats destroyer, destroyer beats battleship type thing. And then somehow the aircraft carrier fits in there. <laughs> right? I, I can see it. But I don't know. I don't know if that guy... Um, ah, whatever. It, it's hard. Maybe some work does need to be done to some HE shells, I think. Maybe just looking at it or providing more explanation on it. I don't know. Anyway, Melf just got his confederate. That is awesome. Uh, so to just refresh everyone's memory on what a confederate is, it's you got to damage at least six enemy ships, and the total damage must or cause must exceed 20% of her normal HP. So that's that's what Melf has done here to earn himself a confederate. He's not done yet, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the enemy team uh, is still con like all bunched up here and, and mouth is just able to shred these people like there another citadel another kill that guy's gone this guy off to our port side how many of you would be willing to take a bet that <laughs> that guy on the port side is going down mm -hmm. all of you that's right <laughs> i mean when you get so close in with these american battleships especially in new mexico because she has uh, what is that 12 guns you don't have a chance um, and I mean this can go I would say yeah I would put it up to like a tier 8 uh, level if I was in my Mogami for example and I'm next to a New Mexico like these guys are here I would be shitting myself because <laughs> because I know that I am about to die <laughs> there <laughs> three citadel hits uh, I think it was something like 25,000 damage or something crazy, maybe more. Uh, but high caliber and devastating strike. That guy's gone. They only have the aircraft carrier left. This was a really, really nice game. Unfortunately, because it was sent to me as a replay, I don't have the screenshots for it. Uh, we don't have any final numbers on, on this battle, like what, how much damage was done, how much credits was earned. But it really doesn't matter, does it? We can see and we know that a shit ton of damage was done <laughs> and a shit ton of credits are earned. So we're going to leave it at that, right? Shit ton of damage, shit ton of, shit ton of credits <laughs> earned in this battle. Really, really nice battle and good job by mouth. Um, again, I mean, if you guys have any replays that you want to send in, or any uh, screenshots you want to send in showing overall results or something crazy that happened in a battle, you know, be sure to send that to me. I've got my email in the video description, thoughtgore1 at gmail.com. Who has the original thoughtgore at gmail.com? I have no idea, but I'm thoughtgore1 at gmail.com. <laughs> so just send it in. Uh, I'll try to work it into a video here and see what we can do about it. Um, but this was a really, really nice game. I was, you know, very nice to see. And eventually, there he goes. Gone. Game over. So that's going to be today's video. Um, uh, maybe I'll get something else out. But I got, have some things to do. And uh, on a personal side note, there is a Grateful Dead concert in my area on Saturday night. Yes, I love Grateful Dead, and I will be attending. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for your time today, guys, and I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.